And now, presented by the BFA Mercury, it's the Friday night edition of the Playbook Update. We're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to be talking about a very interesting story, if you want to call it that. This is going to be a story on the tournament championship game between two ranked teams. And let me tell you what, that game will not be remembered for any of the things that I just said. It will be remembered for a five on three. Yes, a five on three. Starting with the basics, we have number 25, Alabama, facing off against number 14, Minnesota. Everything was going pretty good until... 13-39 13-39 left in the second half of the game when there was an altercation. The Alabama bench got a little too riled up and ended up coming onto the floor. In the rules, it says that you're not allowed to step onto the court unless there's a timeout called. There was not a timeout called. Therefore, the entire bench was ejected. That's right, the entire bench. Now, Alabama only brought 10 active players, so they had... Five players ejected, as well as two walk-ons. Alabama was left with the five players that they had on the court for the rest of the game. And two minutes later, with 11... And two minutes later, with 11.37 left, the craziness began. As Dazon Ingram fouled out. Now, I know what you're thinking. What are the rules at this point? What happens if five players aren't able to go? Well, Rule 3, Article 2, and the NCAA rulebook states, Each team may continue to play with fewer than five players when all other team members are not eligible or able to play. So at this point, Alabama was playing four-on-five basketball. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, just a minute later, with 10.41 remaining, John Petty went down with an ankle injury And in fact, he wasn't able to put any pressure on it. Now Alabama is down to three players. And right now they are trailing 67 to 54. And let me remind you, two ranked teams, tournament championship game. No one's going to remember that. So Alabama is down 13. They're down two players. Now, what happens after this? Well, if you can believe this, Alabama outscored Minnesota for the rest of the game. 30-22. to Alabama really put up a fight with their three players against Minnesota's five, including Colin Sexton, who had 40 points for the Crimson Tide, scoring about half of their points as Alabama just fell short, 89-84. To this day, we should all remember the name of Gallon Smith, Riley Norris, and Colin Sexton as the first players in history in NCAA history, to play five against three. Alabama actually went up a ranking despite losing. Incredible, I know. No one really knew what to say. Even the commentators for this game were shaken. Nobody's quite sure what Alabama's coach was thinking. Maybe he was a little crazy. Or maybe the 12 players on his team that were reduced to just three were motivation for the other nine. Or maybe he said to those nine players... You put these three players in their situation, and now you got to watch them finish it. And they're going to finish it for you. Let's keep on the notion of college basketball, shall we? The Big Ten ACC Challenge is underway as Syracuse and Virginia give the ACC a 2-0 lead with wins over Wisconsin and Maryland. The most interesting in this one should definitely be number 3 Michigan State against number 5 Notre Dame. What's wrong with Arizona? They started out 3 and 0. They were ranked in the top 10 and they have now lost 3 in a row. How will they come back from this? It's definitely going to be interesting as Arizona has definitely been a competitor in the tournament for quite a while now. The top 5 teams you should definitely be gunning for is number 1 Duke, number 2 Kansas, number 3 Michigan State, number 4 Villanova, And number five, Notre Dame. Now we are on to college football. The playoff rankings just keep getting shaken up. As number two, Miami loses to Pittsburgh, 24-14. As well as number one, Alabama, going down against Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Number three, Clemson, was able to hang on against South Carolina as they win 
34 to 10. And number four, Oklahoma demolishes West Virginia 59 to 31. Wisconsin looking to get into the playoffs. They are number five, shutting out Minnesota 31 nothing. Of course, it was rivalry week. That's really hard to say, by the way. And we had Mississippi taking down number 14, Mississippi State, 31 to 28. Number 25, Virginia Tech taking down Virginia, 10 nothing. Number 7, Georgia taking down Georgia Tech, 38 to 7. Number 8, Notre Dame losing to number 21, Stanford, 38 to 20. Ohio State, number 9, defeating. Michigan, 31-20. Number 10, Penn State crushing Maryland, 66-3. Now, if that's not bragging rights, I don't know what is. Number 17, Washington defeating number 13, Washington State, 41-14. Number 19, Oklahoma State defeating Kansas, 58-17. If the playoffs were to begin today, it would be number 4, Auburn, playing against number 1, Clemson, and number 3, Wisconsin, playing against number 2, Oklahoma. The New England Patriots are on a seven-game winning streak, and they look to continue their dominance in the division as they head to Buffalo to take on the Bills. The Thanksgiving games were Minnesota defeating Detroit 30-23, Los Angeles defeating Dallas 28-6, and Washington defeating New York 20-10. Once again, we have two games of the week for you for Week 13. The Washington Redskins just finished up a game with the Dallas Cowboys. And then Sunday Night Football, the Battle of the Birds, the Philadelphia Eagles against the Seattle Seahawks. That game takes place in Seattle, so Philly definitely has their hands full, even though they are 10-1. and The Celtics remain first in the Eastern Conference as they finished up a game with the Philadelphia 76ers last night. And their next opponent, which will be the first game in December, will be... Tomorrow against Phoenix at 1 o'clock. The Bruins have managed to sneak into the playoff race. And yes, it's early. But the Bruins are always in the playoff race, it seems. Finishing up a game against Tampa Bay on Wednesday. They will be playing against Philadelphia in Philly at 1 o'clock tomorrow. This has been the Friday night edition of the Playbook Update. Now back to Alec Wolf and the Mixdown.